My name is Linda Bedinger and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And today I'd like to show you how I made this card. Um, I'm so intrigued and delighted, <laughs> delighted, there's a word, um, uh, with this delightful or Daisy Delight set. And I have been thinking about this corner fold card to sort of feature the Daisy um, for quite a while and I finally had a chance to sit down and put this together. So uh, let me show you what you're going to need to make this card. Um, I used a base of navy, Knight of Navy, that's eight and a half by five and a half scored at four and a quarter. And we'll just go ahead and burnish that and have that all ready to go. Then I have some pieces of white and my pieces of white, this is a uh, five and a quarter by four and that is for the inside of the card. Then I have two pieces that are two and three quarter inches square. Then I have um, two pieces of designer series paper this one is one by four and, or three and seven eighths. And I've used that on the inside on the bottom of the card. Then we'll need a piece that is four inches by one and five eighths. So four inches by one and five eighths. Then you'll also need a scrap of yellow and I use Delightful Dijon for the back of the sentiment here. And then you'll need a couple of pieces or a larger piece of Whisper White for um, cutting out the daisies and creating the sentiment. And so uh, that's what I think we'll need. And we can just go ahead and get started by uh, doing the in, inside first. Our inside card just needs to be adhered down. I'm going to use snail and then I'll show you how to cut this um, front to get this fold. Now this this particular style of card has been around for a long time, but I thought it lent itself particularly well to the the, the size of the daisy. Uh, then we also have for the inside this piece that is one and one by four and what did I say it was? One by three and seven eighths. So it fits with a tiny margin just along the bottom here of the card. And we'll go ahead and get that put in place. And that starts with the decorating on the inside. Okay. Now, the trickiest part of this is cutting this particular fold. So let me tell you how we do that. I'll bring up my trimmer. And what we do is we set this card at three inches. There is a ruler along this edge and what I did was I used a little bit of Tombow and just a piece of white, Whisper White, uh, and glued this little piece on so that I could really see these numbers here. So what I'm going to do is get my scoring blade out of the way and take my cutting blade and I am going to set this edge along this side at three inches and I'm going to set my cutting blade at three inches and put that in place and I'm going to score up to three eighths I think it is. Let me check my notes. Good thing I checked my notes. <laughs> it's from three inches to five eighths. So I'm going to move my cutting blade up to five eighths. Now I'm going to turn it this way, then I'm going to flip it over 
and I'm going to set this again at three inches and I'm already set here at five eighths and this time I'm going to cut down to the three inch mark on my ruler here. Okay, so you've cut from three inches to five eighths going both directions, three inches to five eighths. And what happens is you get this release. If for some reason you don't quite get to the end of the cut mark, just use your snips and give that uh, a little bit of a cut. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is um, using a pierce mat, I am going to um, take my ruler and go from one end of the cut mark to the opposite end of the cut mark here. So right there. And what I'm going to do is score from that cut mark to the end of the card on both sides. It's going to make turning and folding that cut mark a little simpler. I'm going to use a stylus here and let me make sure I can see what it is I'm doing here. Hard to see on this night of navy. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and score that to the end and score here to the cut mark. So hopefully you can see where I have put a score mark here. I'll kind of turn it in the light and hopefully you'll be able to see the score marks on either side. Okay. And what that's going to allow us to do then is to fold this piece this way. And then the thing that you have to watch along here, just in case the score mark isn't perfect, is that this margin along this side is even. So make sure that that looks even to you and then you can use your bone folder to burnish that score line. And there you have your corner fold. So not difficult at all. Uh, you scoring from 3 inches to 5 eighths and then turning it and scoring from 3 inches to 5 eighths. Scoring from that cut line to the edge on both sides and then flipping this over. And there we have our corner fold. Now I have a little ragged edge there. I'm going to snip that off. There. Okay, so now what we have is these two pieces here, so I think we'll move on to doing our stamping next. Let me move a few things out of the way here. And um, let's see, on this one, what I did was, some people leave this part open, but I didn't like the way it looked. So I am using, I uh, guess I need to tell you what stamp set I'm using today. I'm using two stamp sets. I'm using the Daisy Delight stamp set, and from there, I am using the Daisy stamp here, and then I am using these two centers here to get the center of the Daisy. And that's those are the three things I'm using from this stamp set. Then um, I'm using from Birthday Blossoms, this Have a Beautiful Birthday here, on the front, um, I thought it was substantial enough to sort of balance out the size of the daisy. So uh, that's the one I'm using here. Now, I have all of that mounted and ready to go here. So uh, let me just go ahead and stamp and get a piece of scratch paper here. Um, we'll stamp the daisy on the inside of this, and I'm using 
Knight of Navy cardstock, I mean ink here. So Knight of Navy ink and my daisy here. And for this one, I'm just going to center this daisy on my piece of card here. There we go. Nice image. And then to get the effect of a more full daisy, I'm going to stamp it again. And what I'm doing is centering this circle and then rotating it so that the leaves will come out in between the other leaves. And I think that looks right. There we go. So it looks like a much fuller daisy now. Okay, the next thing we're going to need to do is stamp a couple of daisies to punch out. And I'm going to reposition this stamp on here. The way the stamp cuts out, or the punch, pardon me, cuts out, it it has one of the petals straight up and down. So if that's the way you have it mounted on your block, then you'll be set up to punch out from the uh, daisy punch quite easily. So I need two of these. There's one. And there is a second one. Very good. Now, here's my daisy punch. And you'll see that the that the petals run just straight up and down uh, to put it in the punch. So if you if you learn to put your um, stamp on the uh, on the block correctly, it makes it real easy to punch out the daisies. There's one. And I'm going to turn it around this way. And there is a second one. Okay. So here we have our two daisies. And I think that's all I need the punch for. Um, here we have the two daisies. And then this is the one that's going to go on the inside of the card. And I have two stamps, a solid stamp. I'm going to move the blue ink out of the way for the moment. And bring in my Daffodil Delight ink. And I stamped the solid stamp, stamped off once, and then stamped in the center of the daisy. And then this stamp has some texture on the center. So I'm going to do that one in full strength over the top and it has the effect of giving uh, a center that actually looks like the center of a flower. Isn't that pretty? Okay, now on these, since they're going to layer on top of each other, I only have to uh, do one of these because one of those centers will be underneath. So I'll do exactly the same thing. Stamp the center after stamping off and then stamp the textured piece over the top. There we go. All right. Now I can move those things out of the way. And I'm going to bring in my aqua painter and using, um, oops, ink that's on the back of the case here. I am going to just color in these little daisies from the center out and just wispy little marks here just to add a little depth to the petals. And 
if you look at the paper, this this designer series paper, the daisies do have color near the center and they're lighter on the end, so I thought it would be good to match that. So ever so slightly on a nearly dry aqua painter brush here just to get a hint of color coming from the center of the daisy out. Okay, and since this one, this is going to be our top one, I will do both of these. And again, my aqua painter is nearly dry. I don't want a lot of color, just a little bit drawn out on the There, that's all I wanted. Just a hint of color. So I'll set the aqua painter aside and I have a little paper towel here. I want to blot any excess moisture here from any of this. It looks like it's probably dry, but I just wanted to make sure. Okay, so um, I'll put these away for the moment. I'll need the blue again after a bit. So now we can uh, go ahead and add this to the inside of our card and put these two together. And what I did was um, I, um, I curled the ends of this one up a little bit, just all the way around, to give the daisy a little dimension here. And I curled it up first. Then I went back and curled the tail ends down. So it has kind of a bowing effect on the daisy petals. So first curling them out this way and then curling the ends back just a little. Then I took my pierce mat and I used my piercer back to push this part down. So hopefully you get a little bit of realism on the, the petals themselves. So again, push this part down and there you go, you have some some dimension there. Then I used a little bit of Tombow to put these two pieces together. And again, centering one set of leaves in between the others. The good thing about using Tombow for that is that you get to kind of wiggle it around until you get it right where you want it. Now set that here and let that dry just a bit. So we are ready to start putting some of our card pieces uh, on the outside of the card together. First we can take this piece, and some people, like I said, were leaving this, I mean they secure this down, but then they were leaving this looking like that, and that didn't appeal to me. It looks too raw and unfinished. and. Um, I see a little rough edge here I need to take care of because it's going to show. I think it's time to change my trimmer blade. Okay, so this piece I just put with a little margin right here and it hides all of that 
ugly little fold. So um, again, just using glue, I mean snail here, I'm just going to put that in place. And I think it adds a little extra decoration to the inside of the card. And so a little bit of a margin and put that piece in place. And there all of those pieces are now hidden from view. I would say it's very definitely time for me to change the blade on my trimmer. I've got little edges everywhere. Okay, so uh, now what we have is this piece. So we have a couple things to add to this piece in the front. We have uh, another piece of designer series paper, which is this one here that was four inches by one and five eighths, I believe. Yes, one and five eighths. And I'm just going to lay that one flat on this card because between the daisy and the raised sentiment, there's enough going on that I don't think we need to um, add any more dimension. So this piece I'm just going to lay here with an even border all the way around. All right, then this piece is going to get mounted on the center of this, and I um, think I'll put this in place first so that I get that properly centered. centered. The other thing I'm going to do is um, put some glue dots underneath here to hold that piece down. And I just used up my last glue dot on one roll, so I'm going to quickly grab another roll here. And um, I don't even have ribbon tied on this one yet. Um, I'm going to take some glue dots and I'm going to put one on this side. I am going to put one at, well, on this side. And then I'm going to put one right down here on the corner. And that way I make sure that this flap isn't going to move. So that's now nice and secure. Now, we'll add this piece next, and I'm going to do that with snail. Grab my, my silicone mat here. So I want to get my snail right close to the edges here. And I want to um, get this put down with roughly the same margin all the way around this square. There we go. Now this should be nice and dry and we can mount our daisy right, <coughs> excuse me, right into the center of this uh, square and I'm gonna use Tombow for that. A little bit of Tombow on the back of my daisy and I'm going to center that here on my square and give that a second to dry. Now, uh, the scraps that we have left over are the yellow scrap and another white scrap. And we're going to put the birthday um, sentiment on the white here. Okay. And then we're going to use, I used the, the items from layering ovals. And I used, um, if you count from the smallest to the largest, one, two, three, I used the third plain oval and doing the same on here, one, two, 
three, I used the third in the scalloped oval here. And I used the scalloped oval on the yellow. And this Have a Beautiful Birthday just fits without much of a margin at all on this die cut here. And to save a little bit of time, I've already run mine. So there's my happy birthday cut out, and you'll see it literally barely. In fact, this little point of the banner got taken off, but the rest of the sentiment just fits on there. And then the yellow piece, and I it could have backed it in blue, but I thought it, it just looked so much cheerier to do it in the yellow and add a little bit more color. So I'm going to add a little bit of snail to the back of my sentiment here and center that on my scallop piece. Okay, and I am going to put that one up on dimension. That right on that piece of DSP and center from side to side right under our daisy. I thought that... Um, that gave some balance to the size of the daisy. The other thing that I added as embellishments were some of these gorgeous um, glittery, I don't remember what they're called. Um, they come in gold and clear and they're faceted gems is what I think they're called. Anyway, I decided that I wanted three of them down this one side here, the smallest ones, there we go, just because this side looked so plain after all of the others, all of the other decorations, and then one of the largest ones centered on the center of this daisy so I can still see the yellow around the outside. And there we go. That is the project for today. And I'm really pleased with it. Um, I think it has a, a lot of contrast. I love this little daisy flower. You can see I didn't get these as turned down as I did on this one, and I do like the way this sits on the card a little bit better. But there we go. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, and thank you so much for stopping by my YouTube channel today. I really do appreciate it. And if you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I'd love to be your demonstrator. Uh, you can get everything that you saw here purchased on my website, www.lbedinger.stampinup.net. Um, so there's a couple of things to talk about yet for Stampin' Up. First of all, the prize draw for the month of July is a, um, a three-pack. Let me grab the catalog so I can tell you exactly right. Um, the, it's a three-pack of designer series paper. The Delightful Daisy Designer Series Paper. Um, out of the catalog, this Naturally Eclectic Designer Series Paper here, which is absolutely gorgeous, and one called Whole Lot of Lovely. Let's see if I can put my hands on it real fast so I can show you. It is another one of the stunning. There's the Delightful Daisy. Um, it's actually called the Delightful Daisy Designer Series Paper. And the other one is, let's see if I find it real fast. It's, 
they're three of my favorites. Um, and the three together would run about $33 out of the catalog. So it's a nice prize draw, I think, for the month. Um, here is the Whole Lot of Lovely. Um, and it's called Whole Lot of Lovely Designer Series Paper, and it is absolutely beautiful. So what one would get in the prize draw for the month of July would be one package of each of those designer series paper, a value of about $33 in the catalog. The other thing to tell you about this month in July, Stampin' Up! This is the second year they've done it. Last year was the first, where when you spend $50 on the Stampin' Up! site and product, you get uh, a coupon for $5.00. And that's redeemable, so you can order all in July, and then they're redeemable in August. And there's absolutely no limit to the number of uh, coupons and that you get. And you'll get an email from Stampin' Up! It's real important to, to keep those emails because they don't keep a record of the, of the uh, uh, at least they didn't last year, of the um, coupon codes that they send you. So you want to put a boy in a very special place. And then come July, you can put those coupons in and you just put in coupon after coupon after coupon and you can redeem them all in August. So kind of a fun time in summer um, for the uh, for purchases in, uh, in the Stampin' Up! catalog this time. And there's so many n nice new things in there, uh, great things, and some wonderful things that carried over. I know you have a wish list just like I do, uh, and I slowly execute it on it, uh, execute on it all year long. Um, so that's it for me. Thanks again for stopping by. Um, I'd love to have you have be your demonstrator, and I'd love to have you join my team. Details are always below and my telephone number if you want to chat about it. Bye!